How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Hello, everyone. How's everyone? Thank you, Jan. Thank you for getting the party started. My name is Karen Graham, and I am your MC for tonight. Welcome to the inaugural 2023 Eddie Awards, created, inspired, the brainchild, and hosted by Synergy's Work. I am really, really honored to be the MC tonight. I was a little nervous initially, but as I look around the room, I see family and friends that we've worked with many times, my company in the past, and I'm really glad to see so many familiar faces. I am the co-CEO of Sign One News, which is a digital tech production company, uh, Sign One News and Sign One Studios. Sign One News provides news and information, sports and entertainment for deaf and hard of hearing viewers all over the world. All of our staff is deaf. Uh, the majority of our staff is deaf. Um, we have some hearing people as well. And then Sign One Studios uh, provides language access for organizations and production companies who want to be inclusive and diverse. And I want to thank our interpreters for today, Yvonne Jones and Elijah Izaguera, for providing sign language interpretation today. So uh, many years ago when I launched my company, one of my business partners, who's actually somewhere, if you know Jabari, he's always somewhere. He's never where he's supposed to be. Um, but he said to me that whenever you're starting a business, the thing that you want to be is the first, the only, and the best. Now, if you're the first, you're groundbreaking, which means that's a title you're going to always own. Nobody can ever take that away from you. Only may be very short-lived, because if you've got a really good idea, other people are going to follow i.e. Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, and Hardee's. <laughs> but the thing that you strive for daily that no one can do is being the best. And tonight, that is why we are here. We are honoring the best. And I'm excited about that. We're talking about the best entrepreneur in the country with disabilities doing amazing things, shaking up the game, disrupting the system. And we're also celebrating the first. Thanks to Synergy's Works, visionary, Arthi Siegel. Come on, you knew I was gonna say something. You knew I was going to. <laughs> I love that, thank you DJ Sly. Because of Arthi, we are at the 2023 inaugural Eddie Awards, the first awards in the United States <laughs> with disabilities. You are the first, ma'am, and others are going to try to follow, but you're going to be the best. So we also know this night could not happen without our amazing sponsors and partners. And so would you please give a round of applause for all of the people who have made this possible? And now, turn your attentions to the screen. Our society celebrates creators, innovators, and builders. But there's a group that is often overlooked, and those are founders with disabilities. There are more than 32 million small businesses nationwide. But we only hear about a small number that are owned by persons with disabilities. And that is a glaring reality that demands action. Synergy's work is changing that reality with the mission of building one world where people with disabilities belong. We are empowering disabled founders to build sustainable and scalable ventures. As our name implies, creating synergies, fostering collaborations, and nurturing connections are at the core of who we are. Our programs empower aspiring founders to pursue their dreams and create sustainable businesses. Majority of new businesses fail within the first two years, and Synergy's work's primary goal is to get them over that hump. 
Synergy's work provides one-on-one -on -one business coaching, mentorship and network opportunities. We all know that people with disabilities foster exceptional resilience, innovation and problem-solving skills. And those are the very qualities that define a successful entrepreneur. As the catalyst connecting the dots, Synergy's work helps disabled entrepreneurs turn their visions into reality. We are on a mission to ignite an entrepreneurial movement and support one million persons with disability in their business journeys. To achieve this goal, we are launching three new initiatives this year. Synergy's Market, the first online marketplace for disability-owned businesses. Synergy's Venture Studio, developing applications and technology platforms designed by and for people with disabilities. And finally, access to capital for our small businesses through our very own certified community development financial institution. We are committed to building an inclusive and equitable business landscape. You know, we can't do this alone, but together we can build one world where people with disabilities belong. You guys have already guessed I'm a huge fan of Arthi. When I first met her a couple of years ago, she was breaking open a coconut. <laughs> but now she's continuing to break new grounds and break down barriers. And I'm so proud to introduce Arthi Siegel. Thank you, good evening, and welcome to the first Eddie Awards night. This, you can't hear me. Can you? Yeah, this is better. See, I'm not used to speaking like this. I am the worker bee. <laughs> but um, hey, thank you so much for coming in today. It is an exceptional life. It's like a dream come true today. And as Karen mentioned, when I look around the room, I see friends and family. And the last six months, as we have been working to put this event together, we have co-opted more people into this family together. And so, yes, thank you. This is really the core of what we do. Eddie's Wards represents that. Synergy's work is really all about building pe bringing people together and building a world where everyone belongs. The Eddie Award celebration is a testament to that. So today is not just a celebration of entrepreneurship. I believe it is a celebration of disability. Yes, it's a celebration of disability. Individuals with disabilities. Thank you. Individuals with disabilities are not broken. They're not seen as uh, not charity. They are not to be fixed. I believe disability simply is. And tonight, Eddie Awards recognizes and celebrates entrepreneurs with disabilities. I believe that innovation is the hallmark of disability. It's actually disability's DNA. As I always say firmly, that long before words like innovation, invention, design, iteration became the buzzwords in the business world. They were part of the disability world. So let us all join today to ignite that movement and bring together, create a space, amplify the voices of entrepreneurs with disabilities. I, my only request here from all of you is to humbly request you to go back and see how you can amplify the voices and work with Synergy's work to build Synergies. So tonight as we celebrate Eddie winners, think how you can connect and amplify this work of these entrepreneurs. I wish to thank you all here tonight and all the people who are watching the live stream. 
Thank you so much for all your support and bringing us together. This would not have been possible without you. It is really a community teamwork that has happened. And we would not be here today if it was not for all your support. So I'm deeply, deeply grateful to all of you today. Thank you very much. Author Hans Christian Andersen once wrote, where words fail, music speaks. I actually saw that quote while I was researching our first musical guest tonight. The Voices of Hope Aphasia Choir is more than just a group of people who got together and decided to start singing. It is a testament to the human spirit, the power of community, and the universal language of music. They join us now under the direction of Stephanie Gilbert, accompanied by Lucas Tarrant, performing the beloved and popular classics, Blackbird, I Can See Clearly Now, What a Wonderful World, and You've Got a Friend. A big round of applause for The Voice of Hope.
that was beautiful. Please, one more time for the Voice of Hope Aphasia Choir. Direct. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. And so now, the three words that everyone wants to hear at a banquet, dinner is served. <laughs> But listen, we're going to do something a little bit different while they're serving us today. Um, we're going to have some fun while we're eating. Um, I, have, I told Arthi when we were planning this six months ago, I am the biggest nerd on the planet. I am the queen of games. I love games. And I'm putting it out in the atmosphere now. I am going to be on a game show at some point in my life. Let's put it out there. So today we're going to play a game called, let me raise your hand if you've heard it, it's called Two Truths and a Lie. Oh, excellent. Okay, so if you raise your hand, you're going to be the captain of your table. <laughs> so like, no, I don't know the game. <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know this, this icebreaker party game, it really is a great way to get to know strangers very quickly but it's also a great way to learn something about somebody you thought you knew, but you didn't. So the rules are very simple. All you have to do is share three things about you with your table mates. Two of them are true. One of them is a lie. So if you're not a good liar, you're probably not gonna do great at this. So if you start sweating, just automatically, that you're gonna be a dead giveaway. So all your table mates have to do is figure out which one is true and which one is a lie. That's the game, okay? And then when you do reveal the truth, you may want to share some facts about it. You may, it may be something so interesting that, hey, tell me more. It's just a great way so that we don't hear forks clanging on the plate for the next 20 minutes. It's a great way to have good conversation. <laughs> okay, so here is an example. I'm going to use me as an example just to get the party started. Number one. I am allergic to chocolate. Number two, <laughs> I get that a lot. Number two, I played a small role as a reporter in the movie Rush Hour. And number three, I have sung in the Vatican for mass. All right, think about it. All righty, ready? Real quick. I am allergic to chocolate. How many people think that is the truth? You think that's true? True? Just a few people think that's true? Okay. How many of you think I played a role as a reporter in the movie Rush Hour? That's true? True? Okay. See, this side's not voting at all. You're just going to be safe. And the last one, how, how many people believe that I have sung in the Vatican? <laughs> Maria's like, I don't, I don't know. Here it is. Yes, I have sung in the Vatican. I was on a seven-city tour of Italy, a country tour of Italy, and got to sing in some of the most beautiful places, including the Vatican. Um, I am allergic to chocolate. I am allergic to chocolate. I would have loved to have been in rush hour, but I was not. That's the game. So everyone, enjoy your dinner, play the game, have fun, get to know each other, and we'll see you again in about 20, 30 minutes. Um, I do want to remind everyone while you're eating, too, um, that the bidding ends for the auction, the dormant auction, at 8.30. So if you want to bid on an item, you have some time. you got about an hour before the auction closes. And, and, and real quick, can we give a big round of applause to our DJ for the night, Suleiman Salam, DJ Sly. Enjoy your dinner. Just a young gun with the quick fuse. I was up I hope you enjoyed your dinner and your great get to know your conversations. Okay, we're going to continue with the 2023 Eddie Awards ceremony. Um, I'd like to invite Synergy's Work board members Ashish Thakur to the stage. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you why everyone's clapping while he's, wa while he's walking to the stage. This is the most 
positive and uplifting man I have ever met in my life. If you don't walk away feeling better about yourself after meeting this man, something is wrong with you. <laughs> he is amazing. Um, and it's no surprise that he thrives by helping others as a mentor to so many organizations, including as the current chairperson at Synergy's work. Ashish, welcome. Thanks, everyone. So my mom uh, had a stroke when I was 11 years old. I'm 46, and I've been a caregiver since. I have an autistic nephew, and I love entrepreneurship. So Synergy's work is the perfect synergy for me. I've been volunteering for about six or seven years, and uh, I don't consider myself a board chair. I consider myself a board intern. It's Arthi, Peter, uh, Uther, actually the board members, if you can just stand. Uh, Peter, Uther, Steve, thank you, Arjun. Uh, Angad, Angad, if you can also stand, I consider you a board member as well. So we talked about the first, only, and the best. Uh, that's Karen over here, that's Arthi over here, that's our board members, that's all of our entrepreneurs. Any of the entrepreneurs that are here today, if you can raise your hand, please, at the tables, if you can raise your hand, please. Yeah, you don't know you're sitting next to superstars. There you go, there you go. I'm so excited to introduce a dear friend of mine, Shan Cooper. Uh, I don't have enough time on this stage uh, because we have several others to follow, such as Jag and Mother Chef, as well, who are dear friends. Uh, Shan is the CEO of Journey Forward Strategies. She is helping the uh, most highest levels executives, both in private, public, and nonprofit companies that depend on her for advice. She is the most loving family member that keeps the glue together as a grandmother, mother, daughter, daughter-in-law, and a wonderful family. And she's been on the board of public and private companies. She is. Uh, uh, an amazing uh, individual and human being, an honor to introduce her, Shan Cooper. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm going to warn you now, I'm a pastor's kid, and so I believe in call and response. So when I say good evening, you say what? Thank you very much. Let me tell you how excited I am to be here tonight. I get really emotional about this, uh, this work that my friend RT is doing. Uh, I had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting her when I was giving a speech, and she and some of the most outstanding, beautiful uh, entrepreneurs were on this call. And she had the courage to call me afterwards. Right, RT? Right? And it was like, we just met, but I need you. And I said, what do you need me to do? And we went on this journey together, right, to ensure that the corporate folks in Atlanta knew who she was and what this work was all about. And so I'm proud to call her my friend. I'm proud to be a part of this work. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of it, but I'm praying for her, right, for her strength to be able to, to, to continue to do this great work. My comments tonight will be brief. And Artie already has already given us a call to action, but I want to share my own personal story with you in terms of family members who are part of this community. But I want to start by doing this because you know, life is about choices, right? We all choose to do certain things. We all choose how we're going to spend our time and how we're going to spend our treasures um, and our talent, right? And so I like reading, and I was happy to be reading a book by President Jimmy Carter. And you're going to see this ripped up, dirty, ugly piece of paper here tonight. But I carry this in my purse, and I want to read it to you, because this is how I truly indeed try to live my life, and I want to have you to join me. And President Carter, his quote says this. He says, I have one life and one chance to make it count for something. My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I am, whenever I can, for as long as I can, with whatever I have to try to make a difference in this world. Is that not powerful? So I'm gonna invite all of you tonight to join me in this journey. 
I've been very blessed in my life to read, you know, to lead, um, to be the president of Lockheed Martin, Georgia. I've been blessed in my life to work for a great company like Westrock. I've been blessed in my life to lead the Atlanta Committee for Progress. Blessed in my life to work with amazing people, uh, both here in Georgia and across the country. But I don't think all that means anything. And I was so grateful that Ashish, when he introduced me, did not introduce my title, my past, she's done this, she's done that, because none of that matters if I'm not touching somebody's life, right? You all agree with that? So I can give me an amen and a clap, thank you. And so when I think about that quote about making a difference, it starts with each and every one of us. And so I spend a lot of my time, particularly in corporate America, and, and as, our, as she's talked about, talking with companies about issues around equity or the lack thereof, right? Both in our communities and in our companies. And so how do we change the world? So it's just a couple of things I want to remind you of. First, it starts with grace, right? Because, you know, but for grace, who knows where I would be today, right? My family was poor. I mentioned my dad was a pastor. And the only thing I knew, and then what I grew up knowing is that, you know, we are required to love all of God's creation. No matter how you're packaged, no matter how you're shaped, that's what we are all required to do. So I grew up from a very little thing, learning that and knowing that. But what I recognize as I begin to come into corporate America, there are people who come that you will encounter that come to you that have these perceptions, right? And we all have them. We're all guilty of them, right? When I stood up here tonight, some of you said, oh my gosh, she's perfect, <laughs> right? Right, I know you did. And others of you thought, oh my God, I hope she's gonna be quick because I wanna get to the awards, right? And I am gonna be quick. And so perceptions can be dangerous, right? If we don't take the time to really get to know each other, right? Really get to honor what we all bring to the table. And sometimes we've got to be the ones to invite people to participate, right? Invite people to be a part of what we're trying to accomplish. And I love what Truett Cathy wrote about it. He talked about perceptions that, you know, perceptions are you know, define how we, how we view things, but it drives how we do things. And if you've ever read Truett Cathy's book, he talks about, they, they was asked the question, well, what, what's it like to be in the chicken business? And he's like, I'm not in the chicken business, I'm in the leadership development business. I'm masquerading as a chicken company. So think about the perception of that, right? Think about the power of what we, ha what we can believe and think to be true, right? And so I like to invite people, you know, to just, you know, you can have your perceptions, but begin to question them, right? Start from a place of inquiry and not judgment, right? And if we can do that, if we can do that, in the, think about the power of that, right? And so I'm excited to be here tonight to celebrate these innovative, amazing leaders. It's just awesome to be here tonight. And so I want us to start to think about our perceptions. First, grace, then our perceptions, right? And then finally, I want us to have the courage that when we see things that aren't right, you guys have seen that thing, see something, say something, when we see things that aren't right and people aren't being treated with the highest levels of respect, I wanna call on you to have the courage to call it out, right? You guys gonna do that, call it out? Yeah, it's gonna call it out, right? And so as we talk tonight about you know, building this world and you know, already, you know, we talked about this world of inclusion, right? That's where it starts. It starts with us, with us individually getting over our biases, right? Looking beyond who we are and seeking to understand and know people who are different from us. It's not that hard. And I love it today because I get paid a lot of money, I'm gonna tell you guys, right? To talk to people about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I've been doing this now for over 30 years when I was, you know, in, in addition to the other work that I've done. And I will tell you, the innovation in this country, in, our, in some of our companies, and some of our communities, is amazing, but the one question I keep asking is why is it that every 20 years I'm having to come back and talk to people about diversity, equity, and inclusion? When are we gonna solve that problem, right? And so, but I recognize it starts with all of us in the room tonight. And so I thank you for allowing me to just share my perspective this evening. I'm so excited to be a part of this. I feel so blessed. I feel so just, I feel like my aunt, you know, I had an uh, and this will be my last story, I promise you, I'm gonna shut up. Um, but my Aunt Wynette um, was born with a birth defect and she had polio. And in the timing that she was born, you know, black people really didn't have real access to health care. Not too much different from today, but that's another topic. You have to invite me back to have that conversation. But growing up, I'll tell you, I watched as my friends were afraid of her and I couldn't understand it because I knew 
behind that woman whose bob, you know, whose body was twisted and all those kind of things was this loving individual. I mean, she completely spoiled me rotten, and I loved every moment of it. And I can always remember her just encouraging me and telling me, don't allow people to define who you are. Only you get to do that, right? And here was this woman who was just amazing, and we'd go pl take her places, and people would just stare at us, stare at us as, she was, as if she were an alien of some kind. But all I knew was the woman underneath that body was a loving soul. And so I was so grateful that early in my life, I, get, I got to hang out with someone who was disabled, but who was the most loving and joyful person. And God rest her soul today, she had an impact on my life. And I, and I think about you know, my upbringing, you know, we were just always taught just to love all of God's creation. So I love you guys tonight. But enjoy the evening, and let's continue to do the work. And congratulations to our honorees, thank you. Thank you, Shan. We'll pass the collection plate now. And <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you, Shan. Okay, so we're going to start the award show in about five minutes. Is that Daniel Abadie back there? Hi. I'm so, I'm, that young man, man, his energy is so bright, I thought it was a light source over there. <sighs> that is an amazing young man. Hi, Daniel. You illuminated the room, sir. It's good to see you. So the award show is going to start in about five minutes, uh, but I want you right now to just take a deep breath because the next voice you're about to hear is she's not just going to share her story. She's going to bear her soul. In, in the most powerful way. Her name is Jasmine Duffy. She's a spoken word artist, a music engineer, just decades of experience with creating, producing, and mastering music. And I have told her this to her face, and I'm gonna tell her, she's so smooth. Like, she, she exudes cool when she walks in the room. I, I, like, I wanna be her when I grow up. So please give a big round of applause for spoken word artist, Jasmine Duffy. everybody doing today? Whew. I'm a little nervous, so. <laughs> um, the name of this poem is called, Do You Know What It's Like? So they asked me, as a poet, where do you get these words, these words that you're spitting? And I reply to this question by just simply mentioning, do you know what it's like to receive a phone call at approximately 5.21 p.m. and deep down you just knew something was wrong? Because for the first few seconds after you picked up, all you could hear was boom, 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 boom. This intense heartbeat over the phone. And after someone finally breaks you the news, you just couldn't believe what was going on. So you just sat there in silence because for a second you just had to be alone before you rushed to the hospital to see your sister who they say just might not make it. And they're just standing over her. All you can think to yourself is, Lord, why her and not me? I'm stronger. I can take it. I'll give what I have to give just for us to trade places. And Father, I know this is your will. But please, just don't let it kill my sister because I couldn't take it. Do you know what it's like? To at that same time be internally going through your own struggles, but you consciously place your problems aside because you know that you're expected to be stronger. See, the devil tried to take, he tried to take my little sister. But yeah, you asked me, as a poet, where do I get these words, these words that I whisper? So again, let me ask you, do you know what it's like to lose both of your parents exactly four months and three days apart? Your father died while simply trying to live and your mother died from a broken heart. And because you're so much like your father, everybody's expecting you to play the part. But the stresses from not being able to fill his shoes is weighing heavy on your heart. Do you know what it's like to go blind at the hands of a doctor? I put my faith in him. He took my sight and refused to see me after. 
Now here I am forced to live a sightless life while he goes on to be a doctor. And for that reason, I would drop his name, but I refuse to let a coward take me out of my character. Do you know what it's like? To quickly be forced to have to trust again? Only this time, instead of your eyes, they say you got to have open heart surgery because your aorta too big. Can you imagine the type of trauma that went on in my head as I'm being wheeled to the operating room? All I can think is there's no blindness when it comes to my heart. So, Lord, please don't let them do what the last doctor did. Do you know what it's like for your surgery to be more than a success? Shout out to Dr. William Morris Brown at Piedmont. I swear he's one of the best. But in the process of you celebrating, you get a call from your sis telling you your eight-year-old nephew just passed from cancer. And for a second, that broke everything I had just gotten fixed in my chest. So right now, this pen and this mic is the only thing that's taming my stress. But yet, y'all ask me as a poet, where do I get these words, these words that I spit? But I'm sure some of you know what it's like to lose majority of your friends during these things that you were going through. And just like you with FM during that time of need, all you wanted was for someone to be there for you but they made it seem as if this request was so hard for them to do, so you're forced to make the decision to keep them close or cut them loose. So the final option that you choose is to chuck the deuce, because instead of helping me through my problems, you're causing my issues to be induced. So how can you carry the title of my life of a friend that is true? When not one time when I was in need could I depend on you? Do you know what it's like to constantly have to prove yourself to the world because all they see is your disability? When the truth is, I ain't out here asking for no handouts. All I'm asking for is an opportunity. Crazy how they use their sight to dim my visions without even getting to know me. Because if they did, they would see that I'm so blinded by ambition that not even blindness can hold me. And through everything I've overcame in life, with it came a life learned, with it came a life learned lesson throughout my journey. Look, there are some things in life that you don't want to happen, but yet have to accept. Some things that are going to be tempting to the eye, but yet you still must reject. Some things you're going to be forced to learn, yet you really don't want to know. And some people you feel you can't live without, but yet have to let go. 35 years and this the realest poem I ever wrote. 35 years and this the illest rhyme I ever quote. It took me 35 years for me to open my mouth and a lot of silence to be broke. But yet they asked me as a poet, where do I get those words, those words that I just spoke? So my final answer to your question as a poet, where do I get these words, these words that I'm spitting? If that's this, it's not poetry. What you hear is just me simply venting. And this pen and this mic seems to be the only one down to listen. So I pour my heart into it every time, hoping that it will ease the tension. And now that I know for sure that I have your attention, I don't need it anymore. I'm done venting. Thanks for listening. Yes. I told y'all to take a breath. Ooh. Jasmine, you a bad sister. You, yes, that was amazing. Thank you. That's how you get the Eddie Award party started. Here we go. All right, we're going to be uh, awarding our first Eddie Award tonight. Um, if our presenters would get ready, I will be calling you shortly. The first Eddie Award category of the night is the Newcomer Award. This award recognizes an entrepreneur who has launched their business within the last 24 months and is providing an innovative solution within their industry. Their free spirit and fresh perspective are disrupting the traditional assumptions around their product, consumer, customers, and community. That would definitely be the first, best, and only. Our presenters tonight are Rochelle Kremoto, award-winning writer, brand strategist, lifelong entrepreneur, and vice president of content at uh, Panoramic Ventures. Charlie. And Ch Charlie Miller. Charlie Miller. Boy, I, okay. His title is Legislative Advocacy Director Public uh, for Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities. My, t my title for him, oh, hey, Darcy. That, that, hey, <laughs> Jesus. 
the whole table's here. My description for Charlie is one of the best on the fly, no script, winging it as you go speaker that I have ever met. And I know that personally. How in the, oh my gosh. How in the world are y'all doing today? Oh, come on, how are y'all doing today? Y'all, before we get to this award, I really just wanna say, today has been a whirlwind. I was so excited to be coming to the Eddie Awards today, but I had to make a quick stop in Newton, Georgia. And when I was down there, it was, it was a governor's bill signing, and, and, and they think, you know, legislators and all this stuff is such a big deal. And, and, and they go, Charlie, is this the most exciting thing you're going to do today? <laughs> I said, Lord, no, I'm going to any award, y'all. <laughs> and then when I was on the way, I, I get a phone call from Artie, if you don't mind me saying. I, I get a phone call from Artie saying, Charlie, would you mind giving an award? Uh, uh, out tonight. I said, sure, I would love to. Can I, can I get a little bit more information? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just think of it as the Oscars. <laughs> and I said, Lord, Artie, uh, now I'm even more nervous and, and I'm worried Will Smith is going to come up here and hit me. <laughs> so I'm going to pass the mic now. But thank y'all. <laughs> Wow. Well, there you go. That was <laughs> that was something. So I am absolutely beyond thrilled and so honored to be able to um, announce the first three of our Eddie Award winners, um, our nominees. And before I do that, I also want to just congratulate Artie um, because this is an organization that started, from what I can tell, from a mother's love and. I am a mom, and I see mother's love all over this room. And so congratulations to everyone who's here, especially to these three. This is the Newcomers Award. Our first finalist is Keisha Greaves. She is the founder of Girls Chronically Rock. The second is Trevor Dealey. He is the founder of Trev's Trade. We've got them up on the screen here. Look at that smile. And the third is Mohammed Faisal, and he is the founder of Thingum.io. You can read about all of them in your program. So I get the most exciting part. <laughs> the Newcomer Award. I really do feel like I'm at the Oscars. <laughs> the Newcomer Award goes to, drum roll y'all. The winner is Trevor Dealey, the founder of So thank you everybody for being here. Do you have any anybody to say about about it? Anybody? <laughs> and to be here is fun. We I have some new friends and some new comments to post on my Facebook. And, and every day when I do it, <coughs> so it makes sure 
that people will be great in my show business and to have fun and to have lots of hugs and to say thank you. <laughs> now the next best person is, is this is why I'm flying back to Georgia because I'm sad because I'm leaving. I'm leaving because we have to go back to LA. I live with Grandma and Papa. Grandma, can you come up? Grandma, do you want to say something? You want to say, Grandma coming up? everyone. I'm very proud of this young man. He's done a terrific job and his mother has supported him and created this bit. We're very, very happy to receive this award. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our next Eddie Our next Eddie Award category is the Social Impact Award. This award recognizes a leader on a mission to change their community and the larger world we live in. Their business not only has an economic impact, but also strives to solve inequities, address systematic problems, and help build a better world for everyone. They are a beacon of hope and a leader to a better tomorrow. Our presenters are coming forward now. They are Ruby Moore, who is nationally known for her work on behalf of people with disabilities. She's currently the executive director of the Georgia Advocacy Office, or GAO. Yes. And Dr. Jag Sheth. His 50 years of teaching and research experience has made him a global household name. He is currently a Charles Kelstadt Professor of Business at Emory University. Well, good evening. Good evening. Are you enjoying so far? Yes. Can you hear me OK? Yes. Can you see me also? <laughs> Ruby and I have quite a few in common. We had a great chat, we met together, we bonded very well, except we don't see eye to eye. <laughs> You're wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> more seriously, there is nothing more competitive advantage of a nation or a community than entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the most inclusive trait it does not recognize gender. Women are more entrepreneurial than men. It does not recognize age. Entrepreneurs can be at any age. Definitely does not recognize faith and does not recognize disability. In fact, what you have done in terms of surviving and conquering, the inner drive that you have is just mind-boggling. You can contribute a lot more and the role of all of us as citizens of a community, myself being a professor, is to unlock the potential of others. That's why we are here on this earth. It's not what we do, but how can we enable others to be extraordinary, from ordinary to extraordinary. And you are all extraordinary. I really am so grateful that Arti invited me here with my wife to really experience what is going on and I must tell you, Jasmine is incredible. There's nothing, no, nobody's like that, wow. So now, 
is the Oscar time. And uh, the three nominations are Dom Kelly, founder of New Disabled South. John Samuel, founder of ABLR or ABEL. Third one is Thaddeus Brown, founder of Vazla. And the winner is. And the winner is. I love this part. The winner of the Social Impact Award at these first inaugural Eddie, at these first inaugural Eddie Awards is. Dom Kelly, founder of New wow. Disabled South. The song choice, wherever the DJ is, thank you. Um, this is really wonderful. I, I said uh, to RT the other day that it's just really cool to get to uh, experience disabled joy. Um, there's so much uh, disabled struggle and disabled heartbreak and, um, and to be in a room with disabled folks and celebrate our achievements. Every single person in this room's achievements is really, really cool. Um, I started building New Disabled South uh, three years ago um, when I recognized the fact that in the South, our people uh, were, were hurting. Um, our people in Georgia were hurting the same people, same way our people in Mississippi and Texas and Louisiana and Florida and across our region were hurting, that um, we suffered the consequences of policy choices. We suffered the consequences of stigma and a narrative that was harmful. And I wanted to change that in our region. And um, so it's, it's really cool to get to do this work. And when I think about social impact, I, I you know, got a degree in social impact. And I, I know that that means that we impact the most people. And so in my work, I hope to help lift our people out of poverty because we live in poverty at twice the rate of non-disabled people. I, I hope that we can stop our black and brown disabled people from being forced into the carceral system at alarming rates and being at the other end of police violence. I hope that we can liberate our queer and trans disabled people who are being harmed by legislation to this day. I, I hope that we can give economic opportunities to our people, uh, more opportunities to create businesses, an end to sub-minimum wages that pay our people below minimum wage legally in this country. Um, I, I hope that we can get our people off waiting lists for home and community-based services and not shove them into institutions yeah. and nursing homes. <laughs> but give them an opportunity to live in community and thrive. Um, and that's why I do the work that I'm doing, and I'm really uh, thrilled and honored to be able to be here and celebrate all of these amazing people in this room. Um, so last thing I'll say is if you're a non-disabled person in this room, what, what can you do? Um, you can put us on your boards. You can give us leadership positions. You can support our businesses. You can help us tell our own stories, because there is nothing about us without us. So. Put us, put us at the center, and uh, yeah, thank you all for having me here. Congratulations and celebrations when I tell everyone that you're in love with me. All right, our next Eddie Award category is the Creativity Award. And this award recognizes an entrepreneur whose purpose lies at the intersection of creative expression and entrepreneurship. 
They tap into their creativity to have an economic, social, and cultural impact on the world through any form of creative media, including art, music, fashion, film, writing, and their imagination is the only limit to what they can achieve in this world. Our presenters for this award are Donna Edinson, Vice President of Operations of America's SBDC, the most comprehensive small business assistance program in the United States and its territories, and Angad Segal, an Atlanta-based entrepreneur whose passion for food, drink, and international travels led him to launch his own company, Chai Ho Teas, to share his passion for food, travel, and drink with others. He is also the creator of the app called Let Me Do It. <laughs> and that's to help everyone live an independent and full life. Thank you. So I'm very honored and humbled to be here this evening. Um, I've been with the association for 24 years and was a consultant before that. And I have worked with a number of entrepreneurs who have passion and spark, but nothing compared to what I've seen in the room tonight. So I'm humbled and I'm delighted to be here. So the finalists for the Creativity Award are Jennifer Parr, founder of DIY Finchy. Lachi, founder of Ramped. And Leroy F. Moore, founder of Crip Hop Nation. And the winner is? Lachi, founder of Ramped. My name is Lachi, L-A-C-H-I, Lachi like Versace. <laughs> but the real shout out goes to Salil. Are we kidding? Like this whole suit, the whole suit. Um, I flew in from New York and boy is my cane tired. <laughs> that joke never works, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. Uh, I came up and I was like very nervous and my manager said in my ear, just imagine everyone is fully clothed. I'm really excited and grateful for this award because it turns out I've been told that I'm black. Uh, and I'm a woman and I have a disability and I, I am very proud of my disability. I wasn't always. It turns out when I was younger, I was blind and ashamed and now I'm blind and proud. So apparently blindness wasn't the problem. As a recording artist and a public speaker that travels the world for my art, um, I encountered a lot of issues and problems um, and decided I would take matters into my own hands, especially when it comes to isolation. And that is where Ramped, Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities was born. I definitely feel that culture uh, is where we will begin to change and move the needle. Um, and that is what 
Ramped does. We are a global network of recording artists and music professionals with disabilities. We were only formed um, last year, but since then we have partnered to bring accessibility to the Grammys. We've worked with Netflix, we've worked with Sony, we've worked with uh, Folk Alliance, we've, done, we've worked with the National Independent Venue Association to bring accessibility to venues because we believe that music is where culture is born and culture is where we move the needle. Um, and I'm very proud of that work. And I'm really proud to be blind. I want to say one last thing. Being blind is really kind of cool because you get this. Like, look, isn't that dope? Some of y'all are like, can I be blind for like five seconds? Let me just try that cane out real quick. And I'm going to say this. So I've done the research. And here are some facts about the cane. Cane versus baby stroller. Cane wins. <laughs> Cain versus old lady, Cain wins. Cain versus old black lady, Cain wins, but it's her Cain. And here's one more thing that I found that was really interesting. So walking down the street like a New York City street, I have been able to break up fights using my Cain. Like imagine like a West Side Story style fight. Uh, let's say like, okay, Democrats and Republicans. Calm down, we're not gonna go there. These are jokes. Um, and I'm walking down the street and they will just part like the Red Sea. You know, one side will put away their guns, the other side will put away their WAPO subscriptions or whatever Democrats use. So I'm really excited and really uh, happy here tonight. And I know I just said my speech, uh, but I think I haven't really made my point unless I say it the best way I know how through song. So I hope you folks enjoyed this song that I'm about to sing for you called Dis Education. So this is a song about how, about uh, disability independence and about how we're done with charity model, uh, we're independent and we have sex and stuff and <laughs> you know what I mean? And we don't have to sit here and uh, be always charitied at. This one's called Diseducation. I hope you folks enjoy. Love. I see what you made of, and when this 
switch up. I start acting different on them. I throw my wrist up. I just let it glisten on them. No need for tripping on them. I just respect the game. While others come and go, we build in a solid name. It's harder to move smarter when it's less to gain. Gotta make your own rules. Go against the grain. Pressure and pain remains. You settled in with nothing to lose. I can only accept a win. No need nobody stepping in trying to recommend. You know my world better than me. Either follow my lead or set a trend. Once you go down this road, it never ends. The devil knocking at my door, better let him in. I want him that I'm more deadly than the seven sins. <laughs> I'm on that next rise mess live out here, showing you how to turn me away to my face. Now they out here showing me love. I think it's high time for some diseducation. Okay, here we go. That, that was fire. Fire! Ooh, amazing. Mm. Let me breathe on that one. <laughs> that was a concert! I'm like, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm looking at her bio. They need to put stand-up comic on there, too, because it's not on there. God, I mean, she held a room for about 20 minutes. All right, our next Eddie Award category is the Techpreneur. Award. This award goes to an entrepreneur who is tapping into technology to innovate, change, and expand the realm of possibility for their industry. They may be creating something brand new or using something in a completely different way than it was before. They are challenging us to see problems and solutions through a whole new lens. So our presenters for this award are Melissa Berenson, Corporate Citizenship Director of Zen Business, PBC, and Madeline Smith, a passionate disability rights advocate, the 2023 Disability Caucus Chair of the Democratic Party of Georgia, and the founder of the social media and marketing agency, Blind Bear Creative. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, hello everybody, welcome. This has been exciting. Jazz, when you had me in tears in my seat, I just had to say that from one blind sister to another. And Lachi, <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> that was an amazing performance. So the Tech, Tech Entrepreneur Award. Our three finalists, John Samuel, the founder of ABLR. Ruby Taylor, founder of Financial Joy School. And Vanessa Casillero Gill, founder of
founder of Social Cipher. Okay, in the Tech Year Award goes to Vanessa Castaneda Gill. I became a neuroscience researcher. I, I, you know, kind of had some self-hate for myself for a long time. But I think finding passion in my uh, just passion for the brain and how it works, and also just finding a community of people that loved me and accepted me for who I was, made me realize that I was never a broken person. I had just learned differently and needed different tools to thrive. And it makes me so happy that every single damn day I get to help other youth uh, experience that same love and community and belonging and representation. Um, and that, you know, we're in like 220 schools. We're in six countries now. It is insane. <laughs> we're partnered with Lego. Like, I just, it is absolutely unreal. And I just want to thank my team, who I would not be here today without them, uh, my family and my friends for this award, and also Synergy's work and just, Thank you so much for being here to represent this community and for everyone in this room just for supporting and uplifting disabled folks because we're out here and we're thriving. Yeah. <laughs> we're really running this way. So thank you so much. Okay, here's a blame to lose. Thank you, Bruno Lawrence. Uh, our next Eddie Award category is the Heart of the Community Award. And this award recognizes founders that provide a unique service in their local community. Their businesses go above and beyond by offering a very unique product or service, providing employment opportunities, or fostering a welcoming environment for residents and visitors alike and our presenters are already here. They are Jason Beard, and President and CEO of Georgia Care, For Care Source, and I'm guessing Serena Lowe? Stop. I, I didn't have the wig. No. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read Solomon Parker. Thank you for having a name tag, Solomon Parker. Uh, take it away, gentlemen. All right. Y'all, hey, great, good evening, hello. What a special night, right? A special event, already. Synergies, this is incredible, thank you. We are honored. Um, and I, I do have to question a little bit Artie, right? Having two ball brothers up here together, right? <laughs> so don't let the shine distract you, right? Because the real shine's in this room, right? All the shining stars. Wow, unbelievable who we've seen today. Incredible inspiration, man. I mean, I'm, you, you lift my heart up, bring a tear to my eye. I mean, I'm leaving with a heart full of joy. So thank you and, and, and just, Hey, in terms of the, the, the award today, I think the name, the Heart of the Community Award, that's what it's about, right? Changing lives, lifting people up, and at CareSource, that's, we, we talk about ourselves with healthcare with heart. And so we're honored to, uh, to, to present this award tonight, 
And so with that, I'll, I'll let uh, my, my brother, right, my bald brother here, Solomon, talk about uh, a little bit about the, the nominees. And you had to give him the mic first, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks for allowing us to be here today. Um, Artie, man, it's, it's I, I said this earlier, you know, it's amazing how people come into your life, either for a moment or for a season for a lifetime, and I'm blessed that, you know, I've got to cross your life because you've opened up so many doors just for everybody in this room. Everybody here is just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I can say today that if you don't leave here with the fire burning inside of you, your wood's wet. So, Amen. Jasmine, Amen. thank you for your message. Uh, Laki, thank you for your song. Everybody, thank you for your hard work and thank you for the continued inspirations because this is honestly the beginning. The beginning, well, the beginning started with an idea. This is going to keep going forward because there's many things that's happening afterwards. So anyways, needless to say, finalists for the Heart of the Community Award are Allison Fogarty, founder of Doggy Delights by Allison. <laughs> Ashton Gibber, Gilbert, founder of Unbox Recycling. <laughs> and Austin Underwood, founder of Austin's Underdogs. So with that, drum roll, please. The Heart of the Community Award, um, and any award goes to Austin Underwood. accept this reward and I'm on Nate's for all y'all being here to support me for my business and I'm gonna say thank you for importing me and I'm gonna say thank you for being with my my family came first the that part is welcome to do my own business I'm proud of doing that and I'm gonna say thank you for all of you to support me for my business, and I want to say thank you to my fiance. And I want, I want to bring her up here. Uh, Jane, will you come up to the stage, please? to pause just for a minute, because I don't think you guys know what has happened tonight here. But all of the amazing outfits that you've, been se you've seen tonight from the five finalists and the winners, they were designed, created online, and flown here from India. And the designer, I don't know if the designer's here, please, if Salil J. Singh, are you here? Please, please you, and you look super fly. How could I miss you? Yes. Khalil, just walk somewhere. You just look like a model. Just walk. You, we've got a catwalk right here. Just know you need to be seen by somebody. Just, you look amazing. So thank you. Your designs are beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, the mayor of Atlanta could not be here tonight. I know that he wanted to be, but he wanted to let everybody know that he does support the work that is being done here. And so Atlanta's Chief Equity Officer, Candace Instantio, is here tonight with a very special message.
my grandmother would say, did you really just step on that stage like that, young lady? <laughs> but we're gonna be efficient tonight because I am the smallest voice that you should hear this evening. I'm here on behalf of the mayor because he wanted to be here. And because of many things that are happening in our world, he said, you go and you tell them that this matters to me. Um, I've been in my role for 16 days, and he has trusted me to come and bring the words on his behalf, which says a lot about him and his trust in me, and hopefully I will do, do him justice. And what I wanna say is that there are two things that really stick out about our mayor when he asked me to come here, is one, he knows this is personal for me. Um, I learned to sign in the church. That was my gift to the community of, of people who loved on me early in life. Um, I can sign pretty much any gospel song you've ever heard. <laughs> now, don't ask me to sign other things, but that I can do. And I find that when I am doing that, I'm in a place of peace that is different from any other space in my life. So I would say for me, um, I did not know at 12 when I started signing that that would mean being an advocate for those who were deaf and hard of hearing. That's not what I understood. And later, as I became the chief equity officer and I've been in this work for about two decades, I understood that it was those moments of my childhood of understanding other communities that were different from my own that made me realize that it was my responsibility to stand up for every community, regardless of whatever needs you may have. Equity is about opportunity not being defined by where you are from, the differences you have, your race, your ethnicity, your gender. It is about having opportunity at every turn in this world. And that is what the city of Atlanta seeks to do. I would tell you all what one thing that you should know about where we're going. Again, I said I'm 16 days in, right? So there's a lot to learn, but what we are doing is actually launching an equity advisory committee. And we hope that folks in this room will help us figure out who should be sitting at the table on behalf of this community that is represented in this room. I am grateful for the opportunity to be in front of you. Um, I believe that entrepreneurship is a gift. The way that you dream and build a business in your mind and then create it in the world is the same way we can build an equitable world that we hope to see. So I think about Michelle Obama's quote all the time. We live in this world right now, but we get to create the one that we want. I hope you'll join me in creating the one that we want, along with the city of Atlanta and our 61st mayor, Mayor Andre Dickens. Thank you. We could get the DJ to play a gospel song if you feel like. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> That's a funny story because actually that's where I started too. My gift um, in the church, um, I didn't know I had the gift. Um, just a short, quick story because she just made me think about it. Um, almost 20 years ago, God said, learn sign language. My response was, and why? Because <laughs> I have no deaf family members. I knew no one who was deaf. And I had the nerve to say, why? But you know how persistent God is just leave me alone in the middle of the night. And um, I said, okay, okay, I'll run some signs. Um, well, now 10 years later, I'm running a global network for deaf and hard of hearing people. So apparently, <laughs> he knew something that I didn't know. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And now, drum roll, do we have a drum roll? We're at our final Eddie Award of the night. Thank you. Uh, the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. First of all, Congratulations to all of the finalists. We are so, so proud of you. Your hard work, your achievements, you're all winners tonight. But the person who takes home the Eddie Award will take home a $10,000 grand prize as well. One-on-one -on -one coaching with Synergy's work and their team and a free brand assessment from marketing guru, Rochelle Karamoto. And so it seems only fitting that the founder and CEO of Synergies Works and the visionary for this event, Arthi Sego, present the finalists for this award. And she is joined by Peter Barron, owner of Carabiner Communications. He has more than 30 years of communications experience and has the pleasure of serving B2B tech and healthcare companies as a senior level consultant. Here we go, drum roll. <laughs> It's so great to be here with you. Um, 
on the way up, Archie's like, you do all the talking. I don't, I'm tired of talking. So, <laughs> But I know she's the one that we all really want to hear from. Um, but before we move forward with this award, I actually want to ask one of our other board members to come up and speak about, there's a card on your table that you've seen that has to do with golf. Does anybody like golf? Two, three people in here? <laughs> Arthur, would you come up? It's an opportunity for you to provide either a gift to yourself or to somebody you really love because it's an amazing opportunity. Thank you, Peter. Um, good evening, all. Just a big thank you as a board member for coming tonight. This is a wonderful opportunity if uh, you're a golfer or you'd uh, like to buy one for one of your family members as a present. Christmas is next door, right? So <laughs> it's time. Um, uh, it's, a very, it's a very interesting um, community of golfers. It's called Dormi Network. If you look at that card, uh, that's a square card on your table. It talks about the organization. They own about six, they own six clubs around the country, um, scattered on both east and west coast. And of course, there's one in Texas for the winter. So you don't miss golf uh, during, while it's snowing in other parts of the country. And, and uh, we are going to actually, if you're interested in bidding, we're gonna start it. Normally this membership for a year goes for $20,000. It gives you privileges to play as a member and your family's included. I think it's under 23 years of age. Under 23 years of age for your kids, but you and your spouse and um, uh, young adults in your family can play golf. Um, what, this, what this community creates is that you, once you enter the, the gates of the golf course, the club, you stay at the club. It's normally about 45 minutes away from any of the major cities. So all of the chefs are fantastic at these golf courses. You eat, drink, and play golf while you're there. So it can be an amazing weekend. Uh, I can tell you firsthand, I'm a member and I love it. And, and my wife loved it too. Once she went, she said, I'm never going again. Because she didn't find me. I was, I was on the golf course. So, so all I can tell you is that it's, uh, it is a, it's an amazing uh, community of golfers. And uh, the golf courses are scattered across the country in Nebraska. Texas, Virginia, North Carolina, New Jersey, and Indiana. Uh, and they're building a second course in Nebraska. And, and while most of us that live outside of Nebraska may think it's nothing but fields, but believe me, golf courses in Nebraska are, are tough. They're not easy. And all these courses, um, they include um, the golf course in Indiana actually hosts the Corn Ferry Invitational. So those of you who follow golf, it's a very difficult course, and it's one of those courses that you can play the first 15 holes and feel good about your golf game. And 16, 17, 18 add, add about 15 strokes to your score. So uh, when you come off the course, you need the bar. Um, so it is really a wonderful opportunity. They, Dormy has been very kind to Synergy's work and has offered us uh, this opportunity um, to start the bidding at $7,500. So this is one year, one full year, unlimited golf at any of these courses for you and your loved ones. So do I have any bidders yet at $7,500? Going once, going twice. Anyone interested? Not yet. I believe me, it's not gonna go to a raffle. Just kidding. No? All right, we'll, we'll keep it in our arsenal to make sure that we can raise funds later because all the funds that are raised go to Synergy's work. They don't actually go to Dormy Network. So we'll find an opportunity to do this again, but thank you. Thank you, Arthur. I wouldn't expect anybody that works for Delta Airlines to be that good of a sales guy, would you? <laughs> Just a shocker. He talked about um, eating and drinking and playing golf. I would imagine that the drinking probably is better after the golf, is that right? <laughs> I, um, like many of you, um, I feel like I'm being repetitive when I talk about how full my cup is right now. Um, I have been deeply moved by the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I don't often wear a tuxedo. In fact, the last time I wore this was at my son's wedding and um, this is only a few years ago. But I remember feeling a little bit like I feel now. Um, just very happy and very proud. So everybody's mentioned RT a lot, and I, I thought, wow, well, I don't want to keep 
saying good things about Artie. She's going to, her head's going to blow up. <laughs> but if you know Artie, you know there's no ego. You, you just can't say enough. Um, I will tell an embarrassing story on myself. I'm actually ashamed of it, but I'll, I'll tell you about it anyway. Um, Ashish and I have been friends for a long time at the CEO Council. And he invited me to be on the board of this uh, organization and, and that I should meet Artie. And I met her and um, I became a convert almost in a religious way. I mean, I really changed. Because my perception before, and this is the part that I'm really ashamed about, is I didn't really think that entrepreneurship and disability could go together. And um, so I had to repent of that. I became dramatically aware of how far off I was. I, I, and I hope I'm the only one, but I don't know that I am. Anyway, so I've been trying to make up for that <laughs> over the last 18 months, two years that I've been on the board. And it's just been a tremendously refreshing thing for me. And for the people at our company, we do a lot of work with B2B tech companies, which is great. We love that. We're kind of nerdy. But they really love this. Any time they get a chance to talk about Synergy's work, they're they're just so energized and alight with the opportunity. So um, I think I've said enough, RT. Now it's time for the Entrepreneur of the Year, which is really, really cool, RT. this for the whole evening. Who's the entrepreneur of the year? I will just re reiterate the names of the finalists. Dom Kelly of the New Disabled South. The <laughs> Underdogs, Austin from under of Underdogs. Yep. Lachi. All I do Ram. is win, 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 no Vanessa. matter what. Got money on my mind, I can Of Social Cipher and Trevor, uh, Trev's Trades from Tre uh, Trevor. So, do you want to tell us who the winner is? Who's the entrepreneur of the year is? I think you should announce it. I should. Don't Thank you? you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The entrepreneur of the year award goes to. Vanessa of Social Cypher. Okay, I'm glad I didn't have cake in my mouth because I had that right before. Uh, uh, wow. <laughs> I did not expect this at all. Um, thank, thank you. Dang. <laughs> um, I, I said a lot of the stuff that I was going to say, but that again, like, you know, congratulations to everyone. Like, I'm just so, I'm just so happy and it's been such a journey and it's, it's so good to be recognized this way. Um, Disability is the future. Like we're <laughs> we're out here, and I I'm s just so excited to be here. Thank you so so much. <laughs> I'm gonna make y'all proud. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for all of our Eddie Award winners tonight. It has been an honor, as I said, to serve as your MC today. Um, I just feel like I'm talking again to friends and family. I hope that what has transpired here today doesn't stay in this room, that the energy and the synergy of what we've done carries out through the halls, through the cities, through the nations, wherever you live, wherever you may go. Um, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of the community 
I'm glad that we have all come together tonight. You guys realize that this was the first, and look how many people showed up. Can you imagine what this is going to be like next year? <laughs> yeah, we might have to rent the Georgia Dome, Arthi. Just saying. Thank you to all of our guests. Thank you to all of our presenters tonight, all of our sponsors, all of the volunteers, everyone who's made this happen. Um, if you guys got goodie bags, we want to thank the people who provided the wonderful gifts. Chai Ho Tea, Trev's Trades, Poppin' Joe's, Special Needs, thank you so much for offering gifts to everyone. Everyone, have a great night. Be safe going home, and we'll see you in 2024.